I've been all consumed by the mania of wrestling lately, given it is the season, and upon returning to many classics, exploring the highest of highs and lowest of lows, I stumbled into and reignited my love for three of my favourite letters in the entire world. E. C. W. The renegade promotion from the 90s encapsulates everything I love about the genre. Big characters, bigger spots, crazy action that make the big boys drop bricks, and all of the grunge, attitude and anarchy that made me fall in love with wrestling in my teens. <clears throat> now, admittedly, this was all a bit before my time. I missed ECW's peak period in the late 90s due to being busy learning how to walk at the time. But even then, my first ever wrestling video game, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, opened a window into that world which then led me down a very crucial rabbit hole of my formative years. And I figure with WrestleMania taking place in Philly this year, ECW's visionary Paul Heyman being inducted into the Hall of Fame, what better time than now than to take a look at ECW's hardcore revolution onto the video game scene in 2000. backstory out of the way quickly for those uninformed, ECW was the third wheel during the late 90s Monday Night War between WWE and WCW, a period in time still fondly remembered to this day by fans, and if you're a gamer, this is especially true for the scene as we entered into a new era of 3D technology that took wrestling games from your basic arcade style button mashes into a league of their own. On the N64, we had the famous Arky series of games based around WCW and later on the WWF at the time, still widely considered to be some of the greatest fighting games of all time some 30 years after the fact. While on PlayStation, the transition was a little rougher, with the likes of longtime affiliate Acclaim developing some memorable games for the Federation, but sadly, nothing up to par with the competition. In 1998, WWF Warzone released to generally positive reception despite its shortcomings. Of course, we were still in the early 3D fighting game territory at the time of release, so it got the job done. But just months later, WCW NWO Revenge raised the bar to exceptional new heights and became the catalyst for a major shift in the genre moving forward. The following year, WWF Attitude was much the same as Warzone, with a few slight improvements, but the clunky movement, shotgun presentation, and an overall gameplay experience that left players wanting more, WWF would end their 10-year contract with Acclaim and side with the developers of their rival franchise to bring us WrestleMania 2000 on the N64, another absolute masterclass from the team over at Aki. But what about Acclaim? Well, enter ECW, the little company that could. Finally, after a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and more blood, we're beginning to break through the glass ceiling and get onto television, which brought so many more new opportunities for merchandising, action figures, and of course, video games. Then along comes a claim with a game engine already built, so is it really stealing if you copy your own homework? ECW Hardcore Revolution hit store shelves in mid-February of 2000 for the N64, Dreamcast and PlayStation, which is the version that I'll be playing today. Now, like I mentioned before, I was barely even alive when this game released, but when I got into wrestling big time and set out to collect all of the old classic games, the ECW game was high on my priority list. And sadly, not very high on anyone else's. <laughs> That's because this is simply a blatant reskin of an otherwise average to mediocre game. I mean, what else would you expect? Behind the fresh coat of blood-soaked paint, it's the same exact game. From the menus, match options, gameplay, everything is identical, which really is not what you want from the counterculture alternative that was ECW's entire image within the wrestling world. That's not to say that the game doesn't break out and do its own thing, but first, let's get the basics out of the way. 
By 2000, despite all of their newfound success, ECW would experience a mass exodus of stars over to the larger companies. Taz had only just made his iconic debut in Madison Square Garden mere days prior to the release, while Mike Awesome was set to jump ship over to WCW at the drop of a dime. Now, thankfully, these two guys are still present on the roster for this game, but other key alumni are sadly absent. There's no Dudleys, no Sandman, no Shane Douglas, no Terry Funk, or Chris Candido. But despite this, the selection of characters is still quite solid with many incredible names. Each character comes with a selection of four different ring attires, and even if your favourite wrestler is missing, the Creator Wrestler feature is surprisingly stacked for the era, making it possible to create some decent lookalikes. Big names from multiple different companies are totally achievable with this tool, with a little bit of patience, as you can see here. Everyone also gets an entrance walk to the ring, which was becoming the hot thing to do at the time. It's a little bit busted, as they walk like they've got big logs in their trousers, but I'm still satisfied. And each match opens up with a taunt from both opponents, all recorded by the actual wrestlers, which is a lot of fun to hear. There's a chair here with your name all over it! It's time to innovate some violence on you! I am Kaz! Beat me! If you can survive, if I let you. Ah! I want to know something, punk. When are you going to paint your nails and answer the b Oh, damn. I just realized I can't uh, do this bit that I wrote. I was going to uh, rebuttal Rhino's fag bashing, uh, you know, by painting my nails, as I usually do, and people give me shit for it, but I, I forgot to paint my nails, so... Um... Next scene. <laughs> However, when the game actually begins is when that satisfied feeling quickly turns sour. Now, I played Tomb Raider for the very first time last year, and while it's not quite that stiff to move, you still need to force your character to waddle around the ring. Unlike the Arky games, which use the core face buttons to execute regular and strong attacks and grapples, the Acclaim engine is trying to emulate the control scheme of a more traditional arcade fighter, and it simply does not work. I mean, look at some of these inputs for moves. Look at how long these are. It just, it just doesn't fit the fast-paced expectations of a wrestling match. I've seen easier fatalities in Mortal Kombat, for Christ's sake, and worst of all, trying to remember all of the different maneuvers and when you're actually able to execute them is just a real head fun. I'm not a fighting game guy, it's never really been my thing to study and learn a character's moveset, and I'm not about to start with this game. Thankfully, there is a move list in the pause menu, which as you can see, my strategy generally consists of either learning one or two moves and spamming the shit out of them, or pausing the damn game every 10 seconds to look at what I can do next. And it sucks. Controls are often the hardest and most difficult thing to describe and critique because, in all honesty, if you haven't played it firsthand, then you simply can't understand how it feels. You know, and look, I've played a lot of wrestling games in my time, okay? A lot, all with unique and varied control schemes. And while this is definitely not the worst I've ever seen, um, Legends of WrestleMania comes to mind. I've reviewed that one a while back. Um, that's a good example of a wrestling game that is not user-friendly. It's, it's awful. You know, I want my wrestling games to be relatively simple to pick up and play, so while it is possible to adjust to these controls over time, there is still such a heavy reliance on looking up how to actually play the damn thing that ruins any chance of smooth, flowing action. What makes this really disappointing for me is that ECW quickly becomes unplayable. I could not get the Irish Whip move to work whatsoever. You know, you want to throw your opponent into the ropes or into the corner for an epic follow-up move, which should be the press X to jump of these types of games, but no matter how much I tested, this mechanic simply does not work. I tried multiple different controllers, removed the CPU to test more thoroughly, hell, I even booted this game up on an emulator and tried it there. Still, Irish whips seem to be impossible, meaning that all of the functions based around this move and all of the alternative match types that require it are busted and unplayable. 
Nah, look, you know what? I'm still not satisfied with that. There's got to be something that I'm still missing here. So I just booted the game up again and took a look at the move list, which says you need to press left, right, left, right, and X to perform the whip. And since the game doesn't respond, it leaves you open to being attacked. But, after messing around with similar inputs, I discovered that if you press left, left, and X, or right, right, X, then you can actually whip your opponents around, transition into the corner, and do all of the associated maneuvers linked to this button combo. As annoyed as I am, I'm glad that that mystery is solved, but why they were unable to present such a core function of the game in an easy to understand manner is just beyond me. It's a real buzzkill because there is actually some core things this game excels at that often doesn't get the recognition it deserves, and a big one for me is many of the little intricacies it manages to incorporate. Some wrestlers are capable of performing diving moves to the outside, which makes for awesome high spots, and wrestlers can even stand on the ring apron and perform some different moves from there. Now, this is something that the Arky games were also doing at the time, but WWE's flagship series wouldn't introduce this for another decade almost. It's also fun given that ECW was the melting pot for many different wrestling styles, including brutal death matches. So we've got a bunch of match variations from weapons matches where fans throw objects into the ring and you get to whack people with them. Then you've got the cage fight, which admittedly isn't very good, though this is one of the first wrestling games that I can recall that allows the player to set up different rules for each match, you know, deciding how to win and even creating a custom arena to fight in. That's pretty cool. But the match I love playing the most is a barbed wire match where the ropes are replaced with dangerous barbed wire. Of course, a reference to the classic Sabu vs Terry Funk bout from 97 where the two combatants tore each other to shreds in an absolute bloodbath. So it's really fun to play such a rare type of match, even if the gameplay doesn't exactly do it justice, it's still just a fun novelty at best. Taking damage drains your health, but it also cuts the players open in gory fashion. The promotion known for blood and guts definitely delivers on its promises in these virtual matches. I just wish that it was fun to play. I like the momentum system where building up and chaining different moves together unlocks even bigger, stronger attacks and finishing moves, as when you're able to find a good flow, then the matches actually play out like you'd want them to, and the variety of moves quickly becomes extensive. Again, within the creator wrestler mode, you can edit these to your heart's content, but it's getting to them in the first place that ruins this game. I can never wrap my head around it. You know, every few years I come back thinking that I'll give it another shot, but I'm always left disappointed. There is also a career mode, barely. You essentially play through matches climbing the ranks to fight for championships, but these matches are tedious, often against just random jobbers who all gang up on you. Or other times you have to fight this nurse character dressed in slutty lingerie, but portrayed by a mouldy old fossil. Ugh. And look, the career mode is just a boring grind, an exact clone of its WWF siblings, and definitely not worth your time to play. But unfortunately, this is the only way you can unlock certain legends and hidden characters, so I guess you've just got to punish yourself if you want the full experience. Or emulate it and whack some cheat codes in. Now that's much better. All in all, while this game does get a bad rap, and rightfully so, I do feel like some are a little bit too harsh on it. For what it is, ECW's first game, it does what it can to capture the atmosphere and presentation well, just sadly, it can't offer the fun gameplay of its contemporaries. It was alright for the time, but its time wouldn't last long, with the very first Smackdown game by the now industry veteran Ukes releasing just two weeks later, and blowing this out of the water with its fast-paced action, incredible graphics, phenomenal presentation, and killer hardcore brawls far better than anything ECW had to offer. Sure, the character creation was significantly better in the ECW game, but that's hardly enough to save this mediocre game from a mediocre score. Hardcore Revolution gets 4 out of 10. It's kind of a shame that ECW's debut game on a home console was a bit of a dud, um, but let's see uh, what the Game Boy Color port has to offer, shall we?
Ah, look, all of the wrestling games on these portable systems were lackluster, even at the time. I mean, much like the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games, which all suffered a similar butchering on these systems. If you really want to see more of that, then you can check out this exclusive Let's Play episode over on Patreon. But for now, let's fast forward a few months and... You might not expect to see another ECW game after that first flop, let alone within the same calendar year, but releasing in August of 2000, ECW Anarchy Rules worked hard to make some serious steps in the right direction, and unlike many reviewers of the time, and those like myself looking back on it, I actually think they succeeded with this one. Somewhat. Yes. I actually kind of maybe like this game, which you're probably thinking, well damn, who hit Jack over the head with a steel chair? But look, I promise you, this is not the head trauma talking. Anarchy Rules is a good, fun game, and I'm going to do my best to convince you of that. For starters, the game opens up with a fucking hype video package of some ECW highlights to the sound of Debonair by Dope, which never fails to get me in the mood for some extreme action. The menus have had a gritty facelift as well, but all of that is superficial stuff at the end of the day. It's the core gameplay that needed the most work, and following SmackDown is going to be a tall order. Well, as you can see, it is still the same game underneath that glow up, but I am happy to report that a major quality of life fix has been addressed. While some moves still require button inputs akin to cheat codes, many of them have been drastically reduced, which really helps the flow of matches, as executing attacks off the top of your head becomes a lot more plausible when you only need two directions and a button press. Once again, the Tony Hawk games are the best example of how much more approachable this is to play. Alright, I know. For a lot of people, that's simply not going to be enough. And you know what? I totally agree. This is still far from perfect, but at least Acclaim has clearly made an effort to apply all the criticism into some positive improvements. And now that the game is more functional to some degree, the abundance of new match types can actually be appreciated. I'm over the moon that even just regular fights flow so much better here. Thanks to a more diverse hold reversal system, technical map-based wrestling is totally possible. But we've also got so many more brutal matchups, from the ultimate fighting rage in the cage contest, a dumpster match where you've got to toss your opponent into a hot bin for the victory, bad neighborhood brawls backstage, and even a brimstone match. What the hell is that? Well, to win, it's actually quite simple. Throw your opponent over the top rope onto the floor below, which is covered in hot flaming coals, and watch them be engulfed by flames. Man, I love when wrestling doesn't take itself too seriously, and even then, this type of contest is not beyond the realm of possibility. We had Inferno matches in the WWF, as well as the Japan promotion Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, which hosted explosive barbed wire matches, flaming rope matches, electrified pool contests, time bomb death matches where the ring explodes and kills everyone. So, you know, the concept of a wrestler getting tossed onto hot coals? I mean, it sucks if you're the wrestler, but it's fucking awesome for a video game. With the added gameplay variety, things stay fun for a lot longer, and while the Milk Toast career mode is still the same, it's been drastically shortened and focuses purely on the well-known ECW wrestlers. Given the company's real-life financial turmoil in 2000, one of the game's biggest setbacks is the cold roster losing many core wrestlers to other promotions, like I mentioned earlier, along with the likes of Sabu, who is mysteriously vacant. We do get the Sandman this time around, and the legend Masato Tanaka, but without Mike Awesome around to attempt a live homicide on him in the ring? Well, what's really the point? Despite that though, I still played as my boy Rhino and won both the TV and Heavyweight Championships, which opens up Tournament Mode, where you can challenge to unlock additional wrestlers. It upsets me as a fan because this game really put its best foot forward with every wrestler voicing their own grunts and groans. It's a cool detail that you still don't even see today in modern WWE games, but this also highlights the drab audio design and the severe lack of background music that you'd see in other games of this era. 
The fresh new camera cuts, lighting effects, it was all just too little, too late, with the real life company on the verge of bankruptcy within six months. And as for the games, everything else just simply did it better. Smackdown still had the better gameplay, the better presentation, better backstage brawls. I mean, hell, WCW Mayhem and, dare I say it, even Backstage Assault, which is a worthless game, another one that I've covered in the past, even they did the weapons and backstage fighting better than ECW, and to make matters worse, not only was SmackDown 2 on the way in time for Christmas of 2000, which overhauled an already incredible wrestling game, but that same week also saw the release of what many still consider to be the greatest wrestling game ever made. No Mercy on the N64. And just like that, ECW was a dead brand. Sadly, there was just nowhere for it to go. I mean, wrestling fans will already know the real life story, but as far as the games are concerned, despite everything that Anarchy Rules attempted to mend, it just was not enough. Now personally, I do like this game for what it is, but anything above a 5 out of 10 is just unachievable for this guppy swimming in a pool of great whites. Of course, ECW's legacy as an innovative, trend-setting company within the wrestling world, in my opinion, can also be applied to the video game industry. At a time when things were beginning to get grittier and more violent, ECW was trendsetting with its hardcore brand of violence, and a lot of games after this would go on to get crazier, more violent, and even more bloodthirsty than ever. But this wouldn't be ECW's final game, as with the brand's relaunch in 2006 under WWE, led to its debut in SmackDown vs Raw 2008, and bringing all that chair-swinging, crowd-fighting bloody action into a new generation. But for many, that still didn't satiate the bloodlust, so if you really want a great ECW gaming experience, there are some incredible No Mercy mods out there that you can try, which import the entire ECW experience into the god tier Arky game engine. There is the Barely Legal mod, which has been around for a few years now, along with the Bound by Blood mod, which was looking incredible, but that one seems to have lost support prior to an actual release, which is really unfortunate. Um, as for Acclaim, well, they went on to release a new independent brand of wrestling games for the PlayStation 2, but hopefully I won't have to talk about those for some time. But for now, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. These ECW games have been sitting on my shelf for almost a decade now, waiting to be reviewed, so I'm glad to finally check these off of my list. And if you want to see me talk about more wrestling games in the future, then drop a comment below and remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.